Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today, I want to talk to you about finite state machines. So, what are fi state machines? They're a model used in computing to describe systems uh, which have a well, number of states and you can only be in one state at a time. And these states will define the behavior of what it is, whatever it is you're programming. Uh, they're also made up with transitions that can either be triggering events or conditions, uh, which will uh, indicate how you can change from one state to another. Now, although state machines are quite weak, they, don't, they can't do very much, they're really easy to manage and really quite expandable. So when can you use a state machine? Well, um, simply put, it's when your system can be broke down into states. Most of the time this is used for AI, as you'll have, uh, for example, moving towards a player, shooting, or finding cover. It can also be used for GUI, uh, for example, when you're holding down a button, you don't want anything else to happen, or when you're dragging elements around, you don't want to accidentally click buttons, even though you're just dragging around an element. Um, some place where it's really underused is player behavior. For example, you may want to have your player move and jump and being damaged, but you don't want to, your player to do all the three th things at a time. So you can break them, break them down into states and your state machine will make sure that your player isn't jumping whilst moving or, or something. So here is a basic AI finite state machine. So first of all, it's made out of states. So we have an idle state where the AI won't be doing anything. A patrol state will be moving from point A to point B and point B to point A, for example. We have a chase player state, which, um, well, as its name indicates, will be chasing the player. Uh, and then an attacking state and a running away state. Now then we have the interesting parts, which are all the conditions, which uh, describe how you're changing from one state to another. So as you can see, there's quite a few. We have uh, in the chase player state, if the player is out of your seeking range, you have to go back to patrolling. But uh, once you're in patrol, if the player comes back into your range, you can start chasing the player again. Uh, if the player is then in your attack range, you can go into attack mode. But then if he's back out of your attack range, you have to go back to chasing the player. However, if you get injured and you're attacking the player, you probably should run away from that player. And once you're running away and you're far enough, you can go back to patrolling. And then we have our triggers. In this case, we just have the game starting, going from idle to patrolling. And what's really interesting about finite state machines is that they can be hierarchical, which means that here we have our patrol um, state we had before, and within it, that we can have our own state machine, a separate state machine, which describes how the patrol state works. And in this case, it's simply going from point A to point B and back to point A again. So the advantages of using a finite state machine is that it's really easy to organize your code with it and it allows you to reduce a lot of errors because it forces you to be in a single state at a time, which means that say you have a player movement and you're jumping, you don't want to be able to duck whilst you're jumping. Or you may want to, but in some games, uh, most games, in fact, you probably don't want that to happen. Uh, it allows you to follow your code clearly and it's easy to debug as you can actually see what state your, uh, your current AI is in and you can tell which part of the code is, is failing. Uh, it's really easy to change the behavior uh, of a finite state machine because you can always add conditions and triggers and it's really expandable as well. You can, again, add as many states and conditions as you want. Now for this tutorial, we're going to follow this very simple state machine with four different states, an idle, follow, follow mouse, being close to the mouse, and moving back to the start, where uh, essentially the uh, object will follow the mouse once it's close enough. Once it gets very close to the mouse, it'll go into the close state where it won't do anything. And if it gets clicked whilst in this close state, it'll move back to the start, uh, at which point once it gets there, it goes back to the idle state. So let's have a look at how we can do this in GameMaker Studio. All right, so once you're inside GameMaker Studio, uh, we are going to start off with a blank project and just create a single sprite for now, uh, just being a circle in order to represent our object so we can see how it is moving. And call it SPR circle. And next we're going to create our finite state machine. So obj underscore fsm for finite state machine. And we're just going to give it the circle sprite. 
So the first step is to define our different st stages, our different states. Inside the create event, we're going to add a block of code and we're going to define an enumerator called states. So for those of you who don't know, an enumerator allows you to give values to different uh, names and classify them under a single name. So uh, here I could have the idle, I can have my chase, close and go back. Uh, go back, let's just call it like that. And as you can see, I can now call one of them by going states.idle, for example, giving me my uh, a value. So what is nice is that GameMaker Studio will automatically assign default values for each of those uh, enums. We could give them a custom value if we wanted to. Uh, this would be if you're defining colors, for example. However, we don't need to have a specific value. We just want them to have different values. Our next variable will define uh, the current state we're in. So we're going to call it current state is equal to uh, states.idle, uh, meaning that we start in the idle position. And then we're going to have a couple variables like um, chase underscore. Uh, actually, let's start with view range being 640. This is the distance uh, your mouse needs to be, the radius your mouse needs to be in before the object starts chasing you. Chase range will be how close it gets to you, let's say 128. And finally, uh, chase speed being how fast it moves towards you. Let's use a value of 5 pixels per step. So let's press OK and start defining the actual code that goes into our different stages, our different states. So first we're going to define our idle state and our idle state really doesn't do anything and only has one condition which is that if the mouse is close enough we start following our mouse. So let's add a step event and first of all let's name our code. So as you can see here it just says execute a piece of code. Uh, it doesn't really help us so let's put three forward slashes and write idle and if I press OK here, you can see that now a block of code is named idle, which is really quite useful, especially in this situation where you will want to block out your different piece of code uh, in order to follow it more clearly. Let's open this back up and uh, check whether we are in the correct stage. So we can say if current state is equal to states dot idle we can execute some code. Now it's actually good practice to use a double equals and surround everything by parentheses. Even though GameMaker technically doesn't need it, it is much better practice to do so. So what we want to do is, again, we only have a single arrow pointing towards follow mouse. So we want to do if distance to point with the point being our mouse position, so mouse X, mouse Y. If that is smaller than our view, uh, was it view range? I already can't remember. Yes, view range. Again, parentheses. So if this is smaller, we want to change our state. So we say current state is equal to states.chase. And this is it for our idle states. So let's press OK, go into our object again, and add another state. So triple forward slash. This will be our chasing. And what we want to do is say um, if, again, current state is equal to states.chase. Then we want to, first of all, move towards our uh, point. So move underscore towards point, mouse x, mouse y, and the speed being uh, chase underscore speed. Next, we want to add our arrow. So this is close to mouse. So we want to do if 
distance this system point uh, mouse x mouse y if this is smaller than chase range again parentheses for good measure then we want to change our state so current state is equal to state dot close and more importantly we want to also stop moving so speed equals zero now this is because move towards point will actually set the direction and speed of your object and um, you will want to set it back to zero once you want to stop moving uh, and since our state stop close uh, shouldn't be moving we want to stop moving in fact uh, any other state uh, changes any other branching we would have uh, inside this state should include speed equals zero because we're using move towards point. And that's it for chase. Let's add another event. This one will be close. So again, if current state is equal to state dot close. Here we only have again one arrow, which is whether we're being clicked or not. And this is quite simple. We simply have to go if uh, mouse underscore button, no, mouse check button pressed, mb underscore left. Uh, so if it's pressed and let's make this a bit bigger. And uh, we were, and if the mouse is colliding with our object and uh, point collision or collision point rather, at mouse x, mouse why why do i not get sorry mouse x mouse y the object will be ourselves and the precision will be false and not me will be false as well which will return a positive value uh, in fact our own id if we're getting clicked by ourselves because we're using id here meaning we're only checking ourselves So if we are getting clicked, we want to change our state. So current underscore state is equal to state dot go back. Uh, so we can press OK right here. And finally add our latest thing, which is go back. As always, if current state is equal to state dot go back and here we again only have one arrow but we do have something to do so we want to start moving towards our um, our start position so we go move towards point x start y start at a speed of chase speed and we want to change our states if we're getting close enough. So if point distance, uh, distance to point rather, uh, x start, y start, and you want it to be smaller than chase speed, that is because you can always overshoot an object by your chase speed amount, by your speed rather, then we want to change our state back to the idle states and again reset our speed and that is it if we now press play ah, of course not we first need to create a room with our object in however now if we press play we should be able to see the object moving towards our mouse and if I and uh, not working on us for some reason so it seemed to be close in here Let's try that again. Again, the object is moving towards the mouse. It is now close enough. And if I click it, it starts moving back towards the start. 
and as you can see it will now chase my mouse again it will get close enough it is now close in the close i can move my mouse wherever i want if i click it it starts moving back towards the start and once it gets there it chases my mouse again now just to demonstrate how flexible this is say that now if i want my object to start chasing me again if i'm no longer close enough uh, effectively we want to if i bring up this right here in the close state we want to add an arrow going back to follow mouse if the mouse is further away from it we can simply go back into our ch into our close and add another condition we can say if mouse uh, if uh, distance distance to point mouse x mouse y if it's greater than our uh, chase was a chase range I believe yes if it's greater than chase range then we're going to go back to our chasing state like so so as you can see a very small amount of code allows us to um, completely change the behavior of our object as you can see now if I move my mouse further away again it starts moving back towards it very nice and again this is very easy to change say instead we wanted it to go back we can just change what our state is and now again the behavior completely changed if I move my mouse away it will start moving back towards the start which is great so Yes, this is it for this tutorial guys. As you can see, state machines are really quite powerful when it comes to uh, being able to change the behavior of your objects uh, for quick prototyping even, and even for your final games, they allow you to do so much. I strongly recommend them, you use them not only for AI, but also for players and GUI and pretty much everywhere you can. In fact, AI is no longer uh, the best place to use such a technique. Now we have these things called uh, decision trees which are slightly more advanced and stack based uh, finite state machines which I may make a tutorial on however as you can see uh, really quite easy to implement uh, the enumerators allow us to clearly name our different states uh, you can easily change between them depending on different uh, conditions you can have as many conditions and states as you like making it very easy to manage uh, if, if you've tried creating a similar AI before without using uh, these state machines, you will know that you'll end up with a huge number of, of ifs and elses everywhere, making a huge mess. However, now, if you learned something today, you'll be able to use this much better technique. So thanks for watching, guys. You can give this video a like if you liked it. You can see more of my videos, uh, include my Dithered Lighting tutorial and that pool game tutorial, or you can subscribe uh, if you want to see all of my videos. And you can find me up on uh, my YouTube channel, Facebook and Twitter, as long as my Game Maker community profile. And I'll see you guys next time.